Find out why one geek artist prefers Samsung to Apple, Kleiner Perkins wants their money back, and donuts in space. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 323 for Thursday, April 23rd, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com, get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code TN2, that's the number two, when you check out. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney, and this is the show where we cover the tech headlines of the day and talk to experts and artists and other smarty pants people doing cool things with technology. We'll get to the headlines after the break, but first let's talk to Hamilton Klein, San Francisco artist, teacher, professor, and web, web developer. Welcome, Hamilton. Hey. <laughs> so I first read about your work on the bold italic, and I thought this is very cool. More people should know about you and what you're doing, so here you are. Thank you for coming on. Uh, tell us a little bit about your portrait project. Uh, my portrait project is that in about December of last year, I started drawing a whole bunch of people on Instagram, and then I realized I was having a lot of fun doing it, and I made a, a decision to start on portrait painting every weekend for the next year. So I figured that I would have to ask all my friends. Uh, so I just started um, asking all my friends to agree to do a drawing, uh, to agree to sit down for a weekend and do a painting. And none of them agreed. And then a couple of articles got printed in a couple of uh, San Francisco places. And then suddenly, so I thought I was going to have to just like, I thought I was going to just draw my friends. Suddenly I was having people from all over San Francisco like emailing me and asking to be part of the thing. So it was actually, it, it ended up being a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be at first. That's so cool. So you, uh, but, so you had people signing up online. So your friend said no. You crowdsourced friendship, essentially. And uh, then you had people signing up. And now you have had every every day is full for the whole year, correct? I have I have requests for up to three years, actually. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, and it, it wasn't that my friends said no. It was that none of them really like knuckled down and said, sure, I'll take this week. Cause I wanted, I wanted to schedule something. Cause I figured that would motivate me to do it every week. If I had, to, I had to show up, if I had to show up, I felt like that was going to make me not, uh, stop. Right. So these aren't just regular portraits. These are digital portraits. Uh, what, what are you using to create the portraits? So I have a device called the Samsung series seven slate which is a very verbose word for essentially the Microsoft Surface. It was the predecessor to the Microsoft Surface. Uh, and the reason it's good for artists is because it comes with, it's a computer in tablet form. So as opposed to an iPad, which is a phone that's big, uh, the Series 7 Slate was a computer that just happens to be in the form of a tablet. But the really cool thing about the Samsung devices is that Samsung has for a while now been putting out uh, devices with pens, uh, drawing styluses that have pressure sensitivity uh, so that when you draw, it uh, feels it. Um, whereas uh, um, no Apple devices have ever put out a pressure sensitive pen, although a number of third party uh, companies have tried to make pens that work with Apple devices, I've, I've found that the effectiveness is, it could be better. So, so you mentioned the the surface that has come out since you've gotten the slate like does the could you do the same thing with the surface absolutely and in fact they're on the surface three right now and the there is a uh web comic called penny arcade mm -hmm. uh and an artist named mike Krahulik, uh does a lot of uh evangelism for the microsoft surface which has been really awesome uh and he's actually been working with the microsoft team to develop software for their surface uh uh uh, tablets so that the pens work even better with the uh, software on that, that for the drawing software, the pen software works better with it. So what's the price comparison between the uh, like the latest Surface, the Surface 3 and uh, and the Slate that you have? 
Uh, I believe the price is actually still relatively the same. In other words, when I bought mine, it was about $1,100 for the actual device. And then you had to buy a keyboard and a mouse and uh, some other uh, accessories with it. The problem was is uh, the Slate was it, it isn't even sold anymore. Uh, at this point, if you wanted to get something like this, you would have to probably get like a Note 10, which is the bigger Samsung Note device. But uh, when it came out, it, they made it. It was cool. And then they really didn't release any more accessories for it. Whereas when you buy the Surface, it's also a similar concept. They sell the Surface as a tablet device, and then you can buy extras for it, like a keyboard and a mouse and all that kind of extra stuff. So the, I believe the Surface 3 currently uh, sits at about, what, 900 bucks for the cheapest one, then like 1100 for the good-sized one, and then you buy accessories for it. Yeah, I think that this, that, are you talking about the Surface Pro? Yes. Yeah. Obvi obviously not the Surface. That's 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 a silly device. <laughs> <laughs> so the Surface Three, the one that's not the Pro, that you can get, I think, for like three or four hundred. That's what you're calling a, a silly device. Or are you talking about like the giant original Surface is silly? Well, so so the architecture of the Surface is ARM. Uh, so it is essentially uh, tablet software that is trying to run Windows, whereas the Surface Pro is. Uh, an architecture that actually runs full Windows 8.1. Uh, and then, so it allows you to run full Windows, uh, sorry, my hand keeps going in front of my face. Uh, it allows you to run full Windows software as opposed to app software that you might run on a phone or uh, a standard tablet device. Right. So what drawing program do you use? So these days, uh, I use two different applications. I use an application on my Note phone, uh, which is also from Samsung. And then I also use a number of applications on my uh, Slate because it's essentially a computer. And so anything that would run on a PC, I can run. Right. So, uh, so the, apps, the apps that I use are on the Slate. I use a Japanese program called Open Canvas to sketch. I use a program called Manga Studio to draw comics, and I'll use Photoshop or anything Adobe to do any normal editing like Illustrator or Photoshop or all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, we should mention that you have a, a new webcomic. Um, uh, I forgot what it was called. Open... I feel like we should totally mention that. <laughs> Open Mic Night, right? That's what yes. it's called. Yes. And you, you do yes. that with a partner, right? Yes. So one of the other teachers at the Academy of Art, Ben Hewlin, uh, wrote a comic uh, a couple of comic characters and a number of comic strips a long time ago and then sat on them for a really long time. Uh, and it's been really cool to get him excited about writing again and be able to do some drawing. And I really honestly feel like uh, the application Manga Studio kind of made that possible uh, to get that, uh, to make me feel like I was drawing a real comic as opposed to just sketching out a, a, a fun right. thing. So you are uh, you are also a web developer. Tell us tell us about some of your apps that you've uh, created. So the Open Mic Night uh, website itself is actually something that I'm really proud of that I made recently. Uh, I made it so that none of the it, the images can be uploaded and stored wherever I want them to. And then whenever you actually load any of the images, it's loading a fake image that then finds the real image and shows that to the end user. So if you were to just go up to the URL and type openmicnight.com slash comic slash zero dot JPEG, it would actually load the current comic. Uh, even though that's not a real link, like there's no zero dot JPEG, but it'll load the current comic, whatever it is. And so I'm actually, I was actually really proud of the fact that that works. Cool. And uh, so what are you working on now besides the portrait project? Uh, right now I'm working on something with my, uh, with my previous company, Learn It. Uh, they're a tech teaching company in San Francisco. And we're working on a system for them to be able to sell videos to companies, but then have a, an expiration system. So I'm working on that back end. I'm always working on my own website. And as I teach classes at the Academy of Art, I also tend to come up with new concepts and new assignments to keep myself interested and also try and keep all of my students on the edge of technology as it moves forward. Well, thank you so much, Hamilton. Hamilton Klein is an artist, teacher at the Academy of Art in San Francisco. You can see everything that he's working on now or has done at hamiltondraws.com. Thank you so much for joining us.
and uh, now you can finish your coffee. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Yeah. Coming up, apps for rich people, and Xiaomi releases an impressive $200 phone in India. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Harry's. Harry's is fixing a problem most of us have, paying too much for overpriced razors. Let's just admit it, shaving is not fun. We can cut ourselves, scrape ourselves. Dull blades are very unfortunate blades to have around. Razors are expensive. They run about $4 a blade. A guy who shaves every day spends hundreds of dollars a year just on razors. And when we go to the store to buy them, sometimes we have to deal with those pesky locked up plexiglass cabinets. It's such a pain. There's a company that's fixing all of this for us. It's called Harry's. Harry's gives us high quality razors at about half the price of those big brand blades. Harry's makes their razors in their own factory in Germany. They engineer them for sharpness and high performance, and they ship them for free right to your front doorstep. And because they make and ship their own blades, Harry's is a more efficient company, which means they can give us factory direct pricing. They also guarantee our satisfaction. In each kit, you get a razor with a handle that looks and feels great. Three razor blades, foaming shave gel, the starter Truman set is an amazing deal. You get everything for just $15. I love the look and feel of the set, and I love the price. Harry's costs about half as much as razors at the store. And they also have a new aftershave moisturizer that protects and hydrates the skin and the foaming shave gel. Go to harrys.com and get $5 off your first purchase with the code TN2. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S.com. Enter the code TN2 at checkout. It works, I promise. And we thank Harry's for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Twitter, Instagram, New York Times, Mint, and City Mapper. Those are just some of the apps that Apple recommends for your new Apple Watch that might arrive on time tomorrow, April 24th, the promised release date. Of course, it won't arrive tomorrow if you didn't stay up late to order it on the first day it was available, or if you didn't pay someone else to stay up late to order it, or if you don't plan to steal one out of someone else's mailbox, which, for the record, I do not recommend. In time for those app, those with an Apple Watch, you can walk into several luxury stores if you didn't order. You can go to London, Milan, LA, Berlin, Tokyo, and New York, and you can actually purchase an Apple Watch in the store. Everywhere else, you have to go online. But to get apps, you can go to the Apple Watch App Store through the Apple Watch app on your iPhone if you have the most updated uh, iOS. And if you try to go to the App Store online, uh, I think we're looking at what it looks like now. No, that's WatchAware. If, when I tried to go online, I, all I saw was a bunch of the recommended apps that will open your expensive SPG hotel room door. They could charge your electric car, simplify your job as a really fancy doctor, and lots of other useful tools for super rich people. Meanwhile, the rest of us who could only afford a Pebble Watch are out of luck since, according to Cult of Map, Mac, the Apple Store is now rejecting apps if they support the Pebble Watch. For the record, they've always been rejecting apps if they support another uh, operating system or if they say that when in their, their information. On to the next story. The next web re reports that Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi announced the Mi 4 today at an event in India. The phone will go on sale April 30th. It will cost $200. The dual SIM Mi 4 has a one and a half day battery life, 13 megapixel main camera, five megapixel camera for your selfies, the phone comes in five colors and looks suspiciously like the iPhone 5C. And the fight for gender equality in Silicon Valley is not over yet. And today, Kleiner Perkins said they had no plans to foot the bill for their part in the battle so far. Now they could have sat back and breathed the sigh of relief that they won in the gender dis discrimination trial against Ellen Powell, but they want their money back. The venture capital firm is trying to recoup the $1 million they spent in successfully defending themselves against Powell. But according to Reuters, Kleiner Perkins said that they would be willing to waive their costs if Powell decided not to appeal the case. Now, I am not a lawyer. I do not even play a lawyer on TV. So can someone please expl explain to me why this isn't technically a bribe? Megan at Twit TV operators are standing by. And the nonstop thrill ride of first quarter earnings week continues. Amazon beat expectations, but still did not report a profit. This is the first time they've broken out figures for their Amazon Web Service cloud computing business. And they were a bit mind boggling. According to the report, the division generated $5.16 billion in revenue last year. 
Google reported $17.26 billion in earnings, which was under expectations, yet the stock continued to go up in after-hours trading today. Chief Financial Officer Patrick Pichette assured investors that people are still looking at ads on Google, but more so on YouTube and a little less on search. And Microsoft seems to be the only company that beat expectations today, but perhaps they're just doing a better job of managing people's expectations. According to the Wall Street Journal, Chief Financial Officer Amy Hood said the company did a little better in a lot of places. And finally, this actually happened on April 9th in Sweden, but news has just reached Boing Boing's Jenny Jardin. Jenny Jardin, you've heard of Google's Project Loon, designed to use balloons to project internet access down from space. But why not use balloons to send really important things to space, like donuts? That's right. A group of intrepid do-it-yourselfers used a weather balloon to send a donut right to the edge of space. We are watching it right now. And you should note that uh, they did get permission to do this from the government. So do not try this at home or in space or at your local donut shop. I just would love to see a big velociraptor come and grab that donut. <laughs> Still a donut in space. Oh. That balloon burst and now it goes down. Yes, and we're having a lot of fun here. Also in the chat room, having a lot of fun. Chicken Head 21, thank you. Donut, try this at home. <laughs> oh, that was great. Now, a while ago, I asked you all to send in your selfies watching or listening to Tech News Tonight. Last night, we received a great one. So today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Joan Jones. She sent in this photo with the following email. Today, I was making homemade ravioli while watching Tech News Tonight. Earlier, she was making homemade pasta while watching Tech News Today. And we showed her uh, her selfie then too. So thank you. We watch us all day. You can too. And send us your selfies. Tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We might choose to show your selfie on this very show. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And of course, don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.